Welcome back to another episode of the Startup Therapy Podcast. This is Ryan Rutan from Startups.com, joined as always by my friend, partner, and the founder and CEO of Startups.com, Will Schroeder. Well, as startup founders, we are building under great uncertainty, lots of pressure. Uh, you know, we're underpaying ourselves, we're overworking ourselves, we are doing all of this for a lot of reasons. I mean, we want to leave our stamp on the universe, right? We want to build a great product. We want to build a great team. Yep. Um, but a lot of us, you know, I think we also do expect some financial reward and return from this at some point. And that typically comes in the form of some kind of liquid event based on our equity, right? And equity can and usually does get divided in a number of ways as we go along. Of all the stakeholders that we can have in that cap table, what's the worst kind of stakeholder to have in that cap table? The ones that don't work there anymore. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> just, just yep. saying it just kind of like burns I me a know. little bit. I know. God. Yeah. You know, we've yeah. got like, uh, you know, I was in a, a founder group last week and uh, we were talking about just exactly this topic, which is why it's so top of mind. And a couple of the founders were saying, look, I've got a bunch of people in my cap table uh, that were, you know, here three years ago, uh, but right. they're not here now. And at the time I didn't, I didn't think about it the way I think about it now. Cause I was like, ah, oh, you know, they they're, they're here, they've got their equity, et cetera. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at this cap table and I'm saying to myself, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> like yeah. here I'm slaving away every day. Yep. And, and this person's got an equal percentage to me and they don't yes. even have to work here anymore. Like right. how did I get myself in this situation? So I think today we can talk not only about why the absentee landlord problem, as I call it, the people that you know are, are earning but aren't present, um, is yeah. such a huge predicament, and what to do about it. You know, and I think let's let's blow it up and let's unpack it a little bit. Let's do it. This feels like the perfect day to do this because this is one of those problems that always feels like it never comes in isolation. Mm -hmm. This is always like the second or third thing that's piled on at any given time. Yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah, for sure. As a founder, you're dealing with like two other house fires and then something around some ghost in the cap table comes up. And I didn't sleep well last night, so I feel like this is the perfect day to tackle it. I feel like I'm in exactly the frame of mind and the state of energy that I would be in were this to happen. So this will be perfect. I, I'll, I'll be the, 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 the prime example of, of the state of mind that this would actually occur in. All right, so before we get into this next topic, I just want to let you know, what we talk about here is like 1% of the conversation. You know, really this conversation is going on all day long online at groups.startups.com where Ryan and I pretty much talk endlessly with founders about every one of these topics. So if by the end of this discussion, you like the topic and you want to dig into it a little bit more with Ryan and I, just head to groups.startups.com and we'll pick it up from there. So yeah, you, you call it the absentee landlord. You know, the other, the other funny way I've always thought about this is it's kind of like having that roommate that hasn't paid rent in four months, but still <laughs> lives in the house, right? I love that. Um, right. Cause they're still, they get all the benefits of the roof and the kitchen and the, yeah, right, you yeah, know, yeah. they, they've got, it, they've got all of it. Um, now it's a bit different because, you know, again, the, and I think this is how from the other side of the table, it gets justified. You're like, well, you haven't sold it yet. Right. It's not liquid yet. Like I haven't earned anything yet. That equity's worth zero until you do something with it. But that's the rub, right? It's until I do something with it. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, the, the term absentee landlord was actually spoken to me the first time I had heard that reference used in a yeah. cap table uh, when I was sitting across from my first partner and uh, I was telling him, hey, uh, business is going amazingly well. We're running this agency business. It's gotten huge. We had hundreds yeah. and hundreds and hundreds of employees. And I said, look, it kind of doesn't need me anymore, right? Like, you know, uh -huh. what's what we got done here is fantastic. I want to yeah. go do something else. And he looked at me and he said, sounds awesome. For you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he said, but you're missing a part of this equation, which is right. me. And, right. And what's so crazy, I got to be honest, I didn't even think about it. In, in, Hadn't in, thought about in it. In retrospect, yep. I was being selfish. I was also probably 26, so you know, I just hadn't done this before. Yep. And I remember when he said that, I, as soon as he said that, I was like, shit. That's yeah. A, yeah, that's a huge problem. Like, what was I <laughs> yeah, thinking? Yeah, you're like, right. The moment he said it, right? Yep. And so he says to me, I remember this, this conversation, he says, um, if you go out and you go start something else and your equity is still sitting here, I'm going to yep. wake up tomorrow morning and I'm going to be working 
for your equity. Right. And I said, so I'll be working for the value. What will you be doing? And I'll yeah. be like, and I was like, well, yeah, yeah. now that you put it that way. <laughs> right. Like, that's actually, that like, doesn't sound particularly fair. Right. Yeah. It, and I said, well, I mean, I didn't say this, but I was thinking, I was like, well, I know legally I can do this. Right. I know legally right. I have the equity. Uh, we're yep. in a situation where there wasn't a breakup clause. Huge mistake. Uh-huh. Um, yep. So I can do it. But the right. emotional side of me was like, like, that's a horrible thing to do. Right. Like, yeah, I should probably be giving this more thought. Today, right. we're going to talk about the people who are not. <laughs> the people yeah. who are like, I don't care. The people um, who are like, legally, I'm okay. It, it, so right. I'm okay. Right. Peace. How do we build that argument yeah. as the people that, that are stuck uh, holding the ball? Yeah. 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 I think building the argument. And I think that, you know, obviously there are financial ramifications to this. Right. And I think mm-hmm. that's easy to see. I think the one that, that goes overlooked is and you said you know part of that conversation was him saying i'm going to be waking up and i'm going to be thinking about the fact that i'm working for your equity right that doesn't go away that's not like a one-time thought right. oh gee whiz i'm working for will's equity um okay back to it carry on right it's going to be something particularly as like you go on to raise subsequent rounds um or the business continues to grow even more or you get closer and closer to that that exit Um, and particularly if this has taken years and years to get to, that can have a real drag on the founder emotion, right? Right. And and at some point, it's like, why am I doing this? And of course, it depends on how significant that dead stake of equity is, right? If we're talking about 1% or 2%, that's that's, that's a little bit of an itch, right? But if it's 50% of the company, that's my arms off, right? (laughs) That's... (laughs) fucking painful right i don't want to deal with that right like that's that's a huge huge issue um and so i think that i i don't want to you know flog a dead horse here but this is really an important piece of this how it's going to change your mentality how it's going to change your energy and how it's going to impact your ability to move forward and actually do something great with the company knowing that essentially you're now the only horse hitched to the wagon right and you're still pulling and now you're pulling twice as much for the same outcome for yourself. Right. 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 When all and of a I, sudden I, this becomes twice as much work, is it still worth the work? Well, I think part of the, the challenge and kind of what I saw uh, with some of the founders we were talking to last week was they didn't realize there was another option. They just thought, yeah, oh, sure. I guess this person takes half and they just leave with half. And I guess that I'm just <laughs> stuck. You're not. Right. You're not. Yeah. You, can, you can allow yourself to be. Right. You yep. can put yourself in a position where um, I'm saying to myself, well, I, I guess that's the breaks. Right. It's not yep. the way this works. Right. <laughs> and you should not be OK with it <laughs> right. because it's awful. We're going to assume in this episode that most people have not planned for this. There's there's no provisions yep. within the operating agreement, et cetera. There's no reverse vesting or anything else like that. We're going to assume you're kind of stuck holding the bag. And Ryan, to your point, we'll talk about larger equity holders in this case just for the sake of gravity yeah. of the situation. Yep. Yep. But l- let's, let's start to build the argument um, that we're going to have with ourselves and, and therefore with the person that we're going to talk to. And I think the basis of the argument is the equity was implied based on contribution. Now, here's where people yeah. get messed up on that. Yep. They say, well, I made my contribution. Now I'm done. Now I just hold the equity yeah. forever. And it's yeah. like, hmm, that works if somebody else doesn't have to, to work for their equity too. So, Ryan, right. let's, let's say you, know, you and I are 50-50 co-founders on our new deal. And yep. I say, hey, Ryan, I'm going to go work on something else. Here's what I'm saying, similar to what I said to my partner 25 years ago. Uh, the first thing I say is, hey, Ryan, this is really awesome uh, for me because now I get to go work at another company. I get another salary. I get another equity stake. What do you get in return, Ryan? Nothing. <laughs> you get exactly yeah, get, what uh, you had five minutes ago despite where fantastic. it benefits me. And right. all the work you're about to put in is going to be for the exact same reward. That's bullshit, right? And, and again, yeah. for, for folks that are dealing with this right now and they're, they're thinking about this, that's bullshit. I want to be clear that the situation isn't okay. It's not like, oh, it must happen all the time, so I have to deal with it. It's bullshit. 
And you need right. to unwind that thing with all the For power sure. in your being to make sure you are not saddled with this ridiculous anchor that you're going to carry for years and years and years. Yep. And the more time that goes on, the worse you're going to feel about it. The heavier it gets. Well, th there's there's also something I want to back up on, right, which is that we do the – we're going to have to – so there's two ways to look at it, right? Like assuming that you can pick up and carry whatever that person who, who left's load was, right? you're going to do twice as much work for right. the same outcome. Good point. Very rarely does that actually happen, right? What ends up happening is you have to bring on other people, right, right. to do that. So it's either employees, i.e. overhead, so you're cutting into profits – or you're going to have to bring in somebody else, part with more equity, dilute yourself even further. So now you're going to end up doing the same work for even less of an outcome. Correct. Right? Like, talk about, like, it's a painful situation to begin with that can get more painful as it goes on in a number of ways, right? It's not just the compounding, like, angst and anger over being the one who's doing all the work and still getting the same pay. Now it's like, I'm doing more work and I'm diluting myself and I'm doing all, all the work, right? Like, what in the hell am I doing, right? And why? Like, what gave them the right to do this? Well, we talked about this a few episodes back. What gave them the right to do this was not properly structuring things in the first place. Sure. I don't think we need to dig too, too deep into that today. Um, I think there's one specific thing that we can talk about uh, towards the end of the episode, which is uh, some course correction on how we can fix this. But um, go back a couple episodes and you'll find one where we talk about, you know, parting with a co-founder and we do dig into some of the mechanisms that, that have to be in place from the very beginning or as early on before things become contentious. Um, essentially the prenup, uh, of, of a startup, right. That right. deals with these situations. If those aren't in place, then it's going to come down to arguing, negotiating, um, and maybe still not getting a good outcome for yourself at the end, right? So I think that's uh, you know worth revisiting. Go back, take a look at that, and say like, okay, yeah, this makes sense. We need to make sure that we're structured this way, because if you're not, at some point you're ensuring a dogfight, right? And that because there's no other way around this. This will be contentious, um, even if you're dealing with somebody reasonable right, there's still going to be contention in this. And I would argue that at the point at which somebody wants to leave in the middle of this, they're probably not being particularly reasonable. Right? So let's be really careful about preempting as much of this as we can. You bet. And I, I think here's where the argument breaks. And I think if you're on the other side of this, if you're on either side of this, you should understand this. But if you're on the side, we're getting hosed to this whole thing. Here's yeah. what you have to explain in the argument. Equity is compensation. Yeah. Take our salary. If we were to yep. say as the departing partner, okay, in this example, Ryan, I'm the departing partner. Ryan, I would like to keep Miss all you, of buddy. my equity. <laughs> I like to keep all my equity. And guess what? I also want my salary forever because all of the yeah. arguments that I'm going to make about why I should have my equity should apply to my salary as well, right? Sure. I've made a contribution and therefore, you know, my salary is what it was. And if I leave, why wouldn't I stop getting paid? And rightfully, you would say, because you don't work here anymore. Right. Like, literally, I got to hire someone else to do your job. Well, then, yeah. why is equity yeah. any different? Right? Right. If equity is compensation, what we're missing in the argument, because it's not talked about enough, is that we have to continue to create value for that compensation. Right? In the Correct. same way it works for a salary. If I stop yep. creating value, if I stop showing up for work, same thing, you wouldn't keep paying me. And I wouldn't expect right. to get paid, right? Exactly, right. Th that's, th that's the problem. That's the problem. And I think where it gets a little bit twisted is that people don't understand that the, the contribution needs to continue to add to the equity, right? Because theoretically, the equity continues to grow, right? That's how we get right. to a bigger outcome. It wasn't right. worth much in the beginning. It continues to grow. Not on its own. This isn't like equity doesn't just sit around and earn compound interest on itself, right? Right. Equity grows through a, a lot of effort, through good and bad decisions and, 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 and course corrections and all sorts of things, right? That's how equity grows, through continued contribution. I think where it gets twisted is that because it's doled out early on and often talked about, and this is, I think, a, a problem and sometimes how we couch this as founders, it's like, look, I can't pay you market salary right now, but we're going to make up with that, make up for that with some equity, right? Right. And so the assumption is that I've already earned that equity 
and I'm entitled to it forever now, right? You gave me right. that instead of cash. Right. And sometimes that's literally how it's described. But there's a couple missing sentences from all of that, right? Which is that the in order to maintain this equity, in order to add value to this equity, in order to continue to deserve this equity, you have to continue to contribute to the value of that equity. Correct. Right? And that's the broken we'll, mechanic. That's the broken mechanic, right? We and, and I think sadly, we set it up that way, right? Right. Through the discussions we have. Um, and part of that is founders misunderstanding exactly, you know, how how equity works. That can happen, right? Um, part of it is always assuming that this is just gonna be perfect forever and we'll always be buddies and everything will be great and everybody's just gonna we'll be here till the very end sort of um, never and we'll sell and everybody right it doesn't it's just not the way it typically works out right and so there's there's a couple of misconceptions that i think allow us to leave out some really damn important caveats to this yes this is part of your compensation but to your point it is compensation right you didn't get equity for showing up right, right. this it wasn't just because you were happened to be here it's because you were being compensated for what? Contribution. When the contribution ends, there has to be a change in relationship between you and that equity that you have, or maybe in the future had, right? And I think that's kind of really important piece of the discussion that often just gets left off to the side. Or again, we talk about this a lot lately, one of those uh, one-sided conversations that we had with ourselves where it's like, well, in the future, if they were to leave, what would probably happen is this. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen if it's not explicitly stated and you haven't talked about it. Actually, I right. can guarantee you it won't. They'll be like, yeah, that sounds good. And I'm glad we didn't talk about it in the beginning because I probably wouldn't have signed on if I'd known that. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, I, I think part of the discussion has to be if you can make this move, uh, or if I can make this move, again, in our example, if I can make this move, how, how do we compensate you for staying? Right, that's really sure. what we're talking about. Yep. If you're going to compensate me, and and I can leave and keep getting compensated by virtue of my equity uh, value creation, right. how do I in turn compensate you for staying? Right. Yeah. That's the powerful part of the argument, and that's where that's where the discussion has to turn, so that the person that's departing, in this case me, has to understand that there's a cost of my departure. Right. Sure. Um, and again, if, if, if I'm going to say, hey, Ryan, I'm going to take off and I'm going to go work at another company, make another salary, do whatever, but you stay right. behind, your argument should essentially be, cool, I'm going to do that too. And then you're going to say, yeah. well, wait a minute. Now no one works there. Exactly. <laughs> if yeah. no one works there, our value right. is worth nothing. Right? Yeah. It was cool when you were going to do it, but if we're both going to do it, it's not cool. Mm. Right. How does this work, right? That's and <laughs> yeah. so th that's where the argument starts. The argument starts with with you saying, "Okay, let's start from here. Let's say we yeah. both leave, right? How does how do we compensate anybody for staying here? Because we're gonna have to pay someone to stay here. Guess what? Yes, that's you, Ryan. You're the one yep. getting paid to stay right. here, right? You're the equivalent of a around. new employee, yep. so to speak. So how are we gonna compensate that person accordingly? If you say, "Well, you're gonna still be making your salary." Not, so I'm going to make my salary no matter where I work, right? right? How do I get compensated with equity at this company for doing what's essentially two people's job, right? Sure. We yep. have to reset the stakes, and that's what never happens. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, it, it rarely does. It's just, like you said, founders just sort of accept it. They're like, God, I, I, I guess this is what I'm stuck with. Right. right. You're not um, stuck with it. Not, you're not. You're not. And you shouldn't accept it um, without without a pretty serious fight. Now, of course, depending on how things were structured, depending on what the operating agreement looks like, depending on your ability to negotiate, your willingness to argue um, with somebody who probably was close to you at some point yep. um, and maybe still is. Right. These these things don't always end on a sour note. This isn't always like a bad breakup. Um, this could be, you know, just a, a, a very amicable parting of ways that happens to have one piece of it that's just really skewed um, in the favor of one individual. Right. Which could then easily erode that relationship. So I think that's important to consider, too. And that's one of the things that, that I do see leaned on um, in terms of, you know, how, how these things do get resolved. It's like, look, you probably didn't, in, like in your case, go back in time you didn't realize what you were about to do to your partner until he explained it to you. And at that right. moment, you went, oh, yeah, shit, I wouldn't do that. I would, it wasn't my intention. Right. Um, just hadn't thought about it that way. I, right? In that case, and I just hadn't thought work. about it. I, you know, yep. In the moment he said it, I was like, 
shit. <laughs> I, right. I understood right. the logic in about one second. But here, here's the interesting thing. I think that, Ryan, if, if, if you're the person staying, I'm the person leaving, we should say, cool, you're leaving. Let's have a compensation discussion. How will you yeah. compensate me for working for your equity? Right? Yep. Yeah. And, it, and had my partner said that to me, and he said, look, I need to be compensated for working for your equity, um, I would have been like, well, okay, that's a really interesting conversation. Like, you know, how much am I willing to give up, give back, et cetera, to make yeah. sure that you're incentivized to keep creating value? If I right. say you get nothing, I'm just going to take it because legally I'm entitled to it and go fuck yourself, right? Right. And look, I can take that position. Yep. You have the position to be like, okay, well, here's what I'm willing to do with that, right? And, right. And, and we'll get into this a little bit later, but there's a lot of ways to play hardball in this one as well. You're not totally back against the wall. Well, I, I think that you know one of the one of the things that they have to consider. You referenced it just now. I have to continue to to, to work here and create value for that equity to have any value. If you completely right. disincentivize me to the point where it's like I'm either demotivated or perhaps crippled in my ability to move forward, right? Like yep. depending on when this happens. If this is a company of two when this occurs, you've now laid off half the staff, right? Now, <laughs> yeah, one right. person has to continue and try to make this work, even if it's a company of 20. But let's say it's the, you, you know, you're, you're filling, you know, you've got two co-founders, one handles like CEO, CFO, one handles product and, and, and technology, and you lose the product and technology. How is that person who's remaining what are they what are they executing right what are they marketing what are they doing because they've now lost product and technology which if that's right. what your startup was based on kind of important to its future growth right and so you're definitely going to have to either replace that person with another equity partner or you're going to have to hire out and I right. think this can be some of the basis for that conversation that you were talking about in terms of compensation it may not even be direct compensation to the person who stayed it may be the compensation that's required to replace the function so that this thing can go forward and add value, right? So if I also, all of a sudden have to go out and pick up a $250,000 CTO um, and let's say $150,000 head of product, that has to come from somewhere, right? right? That's now foregone cash, which is exactly how we ended up in an equity position to begin with, right? So if they don't understand that conversation now, how did they possibly understand it when we did this in the first place? Right. right. So that foregone cash is exactly where you start to decide how much and on what schedule are we going to start to dilute or, or, or bring back some of your equity. Right? right. That becomes the basis. That true cash cost is one aspect of it. I do think that there's another side of that entirely, which is what the person who stays behind is entitled to from an additional equity standpoint or from an additional compensation standpoint. But at a bare minimum, you can look at it as just replacement cost and what the current value of your equity is versus that replacement cost in real cash, by the way. Your right. equity is still worth actually nothing at this point, right? Not until it goes liquid. Um, so we're talking about trading real cash for your maybe worth something someday equity. And I think that's a, a huge right. piece of leverage um, that can be used, or at least a nice piece of logic that can be used as a basis for determining the basis of that conversation. You know, by the way, I just want to mention if what we're talking about today sounds like the kind of discussion you wish you were having more often, you actually can. You know, we're online all day, every day, working through exactly these types of topics with founders just like you. So any question you would have or maybe some problem you just want to work through, we're here and we love this stuff. And we're easy to find. You know, head over to groups.startups.com and let's just start talking. I think part of this episode, too, could be useful for schooling folks that are looking to leave, right? Yeah. You have a right and entitlement to leave, right? Yeah, what we're do. talking about is how to be cool about it, right? Mm -hmm. how, how to leave under terms where you're like you're being considerate of the people right. that you're leaving, and you're being mindful of how they're going to maintain pace without you. Going back yeah. to my example of me and my partner, had I known then what I know now, I would have sat down with him and said, look, here's how I plan on compensating you for my next move, right? And right. he would have looked at it very differently, not combative. He would have said, is this adequate compensation? And that would have been a right. great conversation, and maybe that would have led to where we wanted to. In retrospect, I'm glad I didn't sell, but that's, but that's, a, that's a whole <laughs> right. other discussion. For what yeah. we're talking about, 
I think that, again, the person departing needs to learn how these departures work, right? So they sure. can be good at it. I think the person who's left behind needs to understand both what leverage they have and what options they have. But they should, yep. none of this involves them just saying, I guess I'm stuck because yeah. you're clearly not. And, and no, I think not. with that, let's, let's try to dispel one other argument. And that's the argument that says, well, my contribution was worth so much that I should get fully compensated for life based on that right. moment in time. Right, I, I right think from that's the beginning. Broken at so many levels. Tell me how you see it. I, I think it is, and and it's funny because you'll I've, we've seen this we've seen this argument over and over and over again, right? Sometimes it's well, I came up with the idea to begin with. It was my right. idea because yep. sometimes it is the the original you know the the originator of the idea, right? The the original founder of the business, maybe the person who started to pull it all together, you know, went out and found the co-founders, gave up the first piece of equity, and and they're like, well, it was my idea. Therefore, without that, this never would have become a business. And so therefore, I have a different level of entitlement because my contribution is what made any of this possible to begin with. Right. That's bullshit on about 25 levels. Right? It's just an inexperienced view. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Um, because we know it takes execution. Um, it also implies that those people would have been doing nothing else with their lives um, had you not come along. Right? They would have just literally been sitting on a couch waiting for somebody to come along with an idea so they could participate in it. Not true, right? There was opportunity cost for everybody involved, typically salary right. cost for right. everyone involved, right? There's a lot of risk here that everybody took on, right? And that's that's, you know, that plays both sides, right? So that is also the argument that, People who are, you know, maybe weren't the originator of the idea, but, you know, kicked off marketing or, you know, uh, was was part of, you know, an, an important growth initiative or, you know, was the, the chief operating officer and handled the onboarding of, you know, 80% of the staff in the early days and helped to build that, that team and the process and procedure. Yes, all important things at that time. But like we said earlier, that got the equity to the value that it was at at that point. Right. Right. Right? A builder doesn't get paid all of the money simply because they laid the foundation. Right. Right. It has to continue to progress. And that progression comes from continued contribution. So I don't think we need to circle all the way back on that. But right. that's really where that argument starts to break down. It's around the continued contribution, right? So whether you, it was the idea or whether you were the first CFO and, and you know, made some great decisions early on around uh, how to structure finance for the company such that, you know, we were always in a cash flow positive position. That's fantastic. Right. Awesome. Until the moment you leave, right? Right. Right. Have you, Will, ever seen a process or procedure that was put in place that got a company to a certain level that then just became the policy procedure process that carried it from then all the way into the future? That just never changed again. Cool, no. you wrote the playbook, and now we've just followed it for the next five years after you were a ghost in the cap table, and it all turned out fine. Here's a, here's, here's a great never. way to dispel that. And get, you know, let's say you're the, the COO, the CFO, you know, whatever your title might be. A great way to dispel that is like, cool, now we never have to hire for your role ever again. Your, your role will go on to manage people. Your, your role will continue to innovate. Your role will show up every day yeah. and actually produce new work because the work yep. you've done is forever valuable, right? right. That's where people are like, oh, well, I guess if you put it that way, that doesn't actually make any sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> but your role, whatever your role might be, if it's not delivering value every single day, you shouldn't be getting yeah. paid every single day. Every single right? day, correct. Because once again, we're going to have to backfill you with somebody who does contribute every single day in order for right. that role to actually contribute for life. This kind of like, it's, it's, it's really a, a, a bit of an arrogant notion that what we did in year two is somehow going to never be replaced. And again, is this fountain of value for the rest of our, our time at the company. Um, yeah. When we're in year three and we're making that call, it's easy to say what we're missing, what a lot of people don't understand about this process is that it takes seven, 10, 15 years for a company to evolve. When we're in year right. three, we just haven't seen it yet. When we're in year yep. three, we're thinking, oh, well, shit, um, I'm going to leave and next year we'll sell. So I pretty much got us to the finish line. We right. don't understand how far the finish line is. But that's okay. Right. And we can talk about some of the mechanisms where we can account for that. Meaning if the finish line is in 12 months, well, then you'll get, you'll get paid a lot because your contribution is still relevant. But if the finish yep. line is in 15 years, dude, nobody even knows who you are anymore. 
right? That's like you right. were so far removed from the from the success of this company. What you worked on is so far away from what what it took to actually get us to an exit, um, or whatever yeah. our, our final step is. That you're you're just not going to get paid that way. Again, right? Equity is compensation, but the value of that compensation has to be ongoing. You can't just. Yeah. Work, you know, a few years and like, I'm good. My job's done forever. It's not. Doesn't work right. that way. No, and it's, it's you know, it, it's it's funny. But I mean, like when you when, when you lay it out, it's sort of easier to understand. And when you talk about how much longer this is going to take. But I think that's that's twofold problem, right? People don't understand how long this takes. Um, right. they, they don't they don't understand that. Uh, the other thing that happens is they look at their contribution at that point and they say, look, everything that's happened in marketing up until this point has been me. So therefore, I am 100% of the marketing contribution, right? I'm the one that did all this. What, and, and, and they're comparing it to, as opposed to the future state where nobody's yet done anything. Right, Well, totally. It's not that they won't, they will. They will right. go on to do things. They will go on to grow the company. Um, said differently, if they don't, your equity's worth this much anyways, right? It's zero. Uh, so why are, what, where in the world can that argument be valid, right? It just, right. It just isn't. And yet, when you when you fail to account for those two factors, which is that yes, your contribution up to this point has been 100, um, that will diminish literally every day from this point forward, um, and things will change, and hopefully so, right? Because if they don't, it's going nowhere. So your equity will either be worth zero, or your contribution will have diminished every day from that point until totally. the point where it does become worth something. Right. Right. And those are the two things that people can just somehow willfully ignore, stand in the middle and go, well, I it's mine. It, right. It's just mine. <laughs> like I did my thing. I came. I saw I conquered. I'm leaving. Um, but now you guys uh, continue fighting. Um, and and please send me the check when when it arrives. That right. Cool. Well, so look, you've got two options. If you're on the ass end of this problem. You've got two options. I mean, there, there are actually a few more, but you know, for the sake of time, let's cover two. Okay. Uh, and, and we'll go through them. I'll, I'll mention them, and then we'll go through them. Option one is once you take on more capital, you actually have a great opportunity to reset the cap table at that point, and we can talk about yes. that in a minute. And the second is you can do the smartest thing, which is just essentially reverse vest, which says that, yep. look, every year that goes by, I'm going to give a little bit back um, to recognize that my, my, the value of my contribution in year three if it's year eight, ain't the same, right? Right. And so, so I'm, I'm giving a little bit back each year. And I think that both of those options are, can be presented. So let's go through each one in a little bit more detail because I think folks probably have never gone through this, so they'll want to understand how it works. So sure. option one, uh, we say, oh, shit, I, I guess there's nothing we can do about it right now. Let's take it uh, to the investors, and let's see what they think. And this is implying that you've got new investors coming on, and they're going to look at yeah. the current cap table, and in about two seconds, they're going to look at where there's dead equity in a cap table. Yeah. It's called a broken cap table. Uh, for those yep. of you who don't know, understand, the cap table is your register of everybody that owns stock. And they're going to look at that, and they're going to say, huh, uh, Will owns 50% of this company, and he doesn't work there. Why the hell would I you know, invest uh, on that basis? And they're right. going to say, if you want my money, you're going to have to reset the cap table. Uh, Ryan, yep. we're going to compensate you with this. Um, investor, me investor in this, I guess in this case is going to get this. And then this idiot will, that guy is going to get next to nothing. Uh, and those are the terms. If you choose not to take them, um, so be it. But if you want to take our money, those are the terms. And I think right. that's where we start to create a little bit of a force function. You know what I mean? Yeah, it does. And I mean, like, I think that in just hearing that you go, well, why on earth would, would, will accept any of this? He would just say, no, he still has 50% of the cap table. Um, so he's going to be involved in this decision. Um, he's, he's not going to be forced into, in, into signing this. Uh, he's, he's not going to accept these terms. Um, and, and yet, uh, you do have leverage there, right? Because if this is, again, like this is required for the survival or the growth of the company, or this is likely what's going to take it to the next level to get it to a point where the out, the equity has any value whatsoever, this may be a necessary step, right? And again, right. If, they're, if they're rational people, um, even if they're greedy people or, or irrational people, they may still be able to see through the math on this and go, okay, like this is what's required for me to actually ever end up getting anything out of this, where else can this happen? So as we look at like, as we look using the funding round, um, continuing the example, 
where else can that be used as a point of leverage to force this? Really, the funding round is the only consistent uh, you know, force function that I've ever seen, and here's why. Yeah. Typically, by the time the company is raising money, it's out of money. So it's more right. of a we, we, we take this food or we die type thing, whereas it's yeah. not like, oh, my God, we're about to go public and we're just taking this on as extra capital. That, that's a whole right. different discussion. And frankly, yeah. if you get that far and the person still has equity, they have a fair amount of, of latitude and control, and you're probably messed yep. up by not clearing this up earlier. Um, but often what will happen, it's not just um, uh, co-founders, let's say, that this becomes a problem with. It's also early investors. Where the early investors yep. put in money seven years ago, nothing really happened. We pivoted a bunch of times, and we get to the new investors, and they're like, "Hey, you know, that's cool that they put in money a long time ago, but that money isn't actively going to do jack shit for what we need to do now, and so yeah. we're going to nuke the entire cap table, start everything over, and here's who's going to get what. We're the new investor. These are our terms, and we can set yeah. whatever terms we want. You can choose Correct. not to abide by them. That's on you. But if you're going to take these terms," And any, any reasonable investor is going to look at the cap table and say, I'm not going to invest a bunch of money in people who don't work here. I don't care what they right, think right. they're entitled to. I need yep. people, guess what, that work here still and are earning the value <laughs> yeah. of that compensation. Yes, yes, for sure. Okay, so funding round, good time to clean this up. Um, not ideal, obviously, uh, because it still requires acceptance. Um, depending again on on what stake they have in the company or what control they have over your ability to make this decision, they may have uh, a lot. They may have very little. Um, it's a, it's an okay time, right? It's it's one of the one of the the major points of leverage. Uh, the the better time um, would have been to to preempt this with some type of an agreement, um, essentially around you know the the equity clawback or the reverse right. vesting. Um, so let's dig in on that one a little bit, because um, I think that one is one that uh, w when I when I talk to founders about this, they're like, you can do that. Right. <laughs> yes, you can do that. <laughs> I, I think where it makes the argument indigestible is that when you go to your your departing founder and you say, I'm going to take it all right now, it's right. too sudden. It's too much of a shock. Right. There's yeah. so much that hasn't been represented. I'll give you a good example. Ryan, if I'm the, the departing founder, on day one, I still feel the weight of all of my contribution. It's right there. Sure. But six months, a year from now, this is almost like a relationship, two years from yep. now, I'm on other stuff, man. Right? I've right. got compensation elsewhere. Like, I, I sort of remember what I did there, but like, it doesn't <laughs> feel as, as strong. Yeah. And so what we're doing, you, know, you as, as the remaining founder, what you're doing with me is you're making it so it's not a shock to the system. You're right. punting where the pain will come from, right? And frankly, you're yep. punting it to a time where it's not that big of a deal anymore, right? That's the thing. Well, I mean, just the, the calculus of it makes sense here, right? If, if you leave today and I take all of your equity back yep, and I sell four days from now, that whole argument about my contribution is what got us here Right, still really damn valid still unless I brought in somebody who in four days managed to kick so much ass that you didn't that right. <laughs> we're now suddenly selling. Right. right Now, this doesn't happen very often. So, of course, I'm using a really extreme example. But, like, yeah, that that's not fair either, right? Because at that point, your contribution still has the bulk of whatever value was created is attached to what you did. You so, bet. like, if you've been there for three years... Um, and, and we sell a year later, let's say now the time that you put in represents 75% based on time alone, right? Just right. to keep math simple here, 75% of the value that was created. That may not be true at all. Somebody else may have come in and, and, and built on what you did and, and kind of doubled or tripled or quadrupled sure. um, those efforts, right? That gets pretty complicated, but just for, for sake of simple argument, um, to understand how this reverse vesting looks and why you would do it, just even from a time decay perspective, it makes sense, right? Now, you can no longer say after a year has passed or two years have passed, or let's go to three years. Now, at best, you're 50% of that contribution from a time perspective, right? Your right. contribution is now half of what has been contributed from a time perspective to whatever your function was. Right. Right. And so I think that's that's, it, you know, an easy way of kind of looking at this and understanding it um, where this conversation usually falls flat is when I talk about reverse vesting. 
Um, and and I hear, what's vesting? And I go, oh, right. okay, right. well, right? So you both started with whatever equity you had from day one. So if you didn't vest into your equity, the idea that it's, you know, you didn't work your way into it over time, the idea that you're going to work your way out of it over time is going to be a much less popular conversation. So again, a lot of this has to go back to structuring this properly from the start. And if it wasn't, it just makes the conversations that much more cumbersome because you have to explain a concept and then explain how we're going to reverse it, right? So, you know, just try to get these things right from the beginning. If you haven't, um, try to correct them before you're in a situation where they're actually a required discussion because at that point, it's just so much harder to, to get everybody on the same page. I think we haven't gotten there, though. Like, you know, again, and a lot of folks haven't, as, as we both know. Yep. Um, if you haven't gotten there, essentially, here's the mechanism you're trying to put in place. The first question is, uh, how do I get compensated for staying here and continuing to yep. build value for your equity, right? Correct. And, and here's, here's simple math, Ryan. Um, I'm going to say, again, de departing employee in this case, um, I want, I've got 50% of the company. I'll give yep. you back 10% per year over the next five years. Now, that would imply that after five years, I have zero. I'm going to go ahead and say, you're probably not going to get away with that conversation, right? Right. You're probably going to have to say, uh, I'm going to give over a four-year period 10% of my equity, and on year five, that kind of ends, and, I, and I'm going to remain with 10% of the company. Yep. There's, yep. there's almost Pretty always common. going to have to be some remaining hold on because saying you're going to take someone to zero, you're just going to get nowhere with that conversation. Now, right. if you're really adamant that you want them wholly out of this thing, you could have a discussion that says, look, um, if at any point we want to buy you out of the rest of your equity, here's maybe the terms that we would use. So a buyout clause right. always makes sense, right? And it yep. could be for some percentage or multiple of, of the, uh, the valuation. And so what we're trying to do, though, is we need the departing person, me, to recognize that I have to compensate you for not working there anymore. You're yes. going to be working there for my equity. I'm not. And if I'm not compensating you, I'm going to have to compensate the person that's going to backfill me, right? right? But the reality is my contribution will degrade over time, right? It'll become less valuable. Yep. And if at some point, if two and a half years in we sell, then I still get whatever my pro rata share of my equity is. So not the right. end of the world. I'm not going to zero. Exactly. Um, but, but we just have to kind of get me sober about what departing a company means and what the yes. contribution has to be. If you're really saying, hey, I'm, I'm a, I'm a co-founder in this company and I've got half the company, then act like it. Act like somebody that has right. to compensate people <laughs> for doing the work. All right, so that was fun. But let's actually keep this conversation going. You've heard what we think about this, but you know, Ryan and I would really like to hear what you think. And we're online like all day long, pretty much talking about every startup topic you could think of from fundraising to customer acquisition to just really how to get all of this crazy startup stuff out of your head. And there's tons of other founders just like you. They're weighing in on these topics. So you'll get a chance to just hang out and meet some really smart founders. We're also super, super easy to find. You head over to groups.startups.com and let Ryan and I hear what's on your mind. Let's get to know each other a little bit and let's just start having more of these conversations.